Dear students, in our daily life, we use cells and batteries. Cells we use in torch, the remote control of the television or air conditioner. We use battery in the inverter or automobiles. We also use cells in the hearing aids and our wrist watches. These cells and batteries are electrochemical cells. What does this electrochemical cell means? Which branch of the chemistry deals with this electrochemical phenomena? Today, we will study about this branch of chemistry known as electrochemistry. Electrochemistry is the branch of chemistry which deals with the conversion of the energy which is produced during a spontaneous chemical reaction into electrical energy and then the use of this electrical energy into carrying out those reactions which are non-spontaneous. Electrochemical reactions are eco-friendly, they are very efficient and less polluting. The basis of the electrochemical reactions is the redox reactions. Redox reactions you have already studied in your class 11th but before starting the electrochemistry or telling you the working of an electrochemical cell let me again give you a brief idea of the redox reactions. Oxidation it is the process of loss of electron by a substance. Reduction Reduction is the process of gain of electron by a substance. Oxidation and reduction takes place simultaneously. So, we call them the redox reactions. We can define redox reactions as simultaneous oxidation and reduction reaction. Let me explain you taking a suitable example. Just see the slide. It is a redox reaction between zinc and copper. In the reactant side you can see that zinc is in the solid state and the copper are in the form of the ions with the 2 plus charge. After the reaction you can see that after losing 2 electrons zinc changes into zinc ions and copper ions they gain those 2 electrons which are lost by the zinc and they are reduced to copper. Zinc is oxidized and copper is reduced. We can very well see the loss and the gain of the two electrons. The simultaneous loss and gain of electrons is known as the redox reaction. One substance is oxidized and the other substance is reduced. Let us know what is a reducing agent and what is an oxidizing agent? The substance which loses electron is itself oxidized and is known as reducing agent. The other substance which gains electrons is itself is reduced and it is known as oxidizing agent. To remember this, let me give you a memory aid. Oil, O-I-L that means oxidation is loss of electron. Rig R I G that means reduction is gain of electrons. As I have earlier told you redox reaction is the basis of an electrochemical cell or you can say a galvanic cell or a voltaic cell. Electrochemical cells. Let's know what is that? This cell converts the chemical energy liberated during the redox reaction to electrical energy. Again there is an example of the zinc copper cell. The energy, the chemical energy which is produced during this reaction is converted into electrical energy. That is the function of an electrochemical cell. 
Let me explain you the working of an electrochemical cell in detail. In an electrochemical cell, there are two half cells and they are also known as the redox couple. The one cell is the reduction half cell and the another is an oxidation half cell. As the name is clear, the half cell in which the oxidation takes place is known as the oxidation half cell and the other cell in which the reduction takes place that means the gain of electrons is known as the reduction half cell. In that cell since the zinc is losing electron so that is known as the oxidation half cell and the copper half cell will gain the electron and that will known as the reduction half cell. In the picture you can see that there is a beaker a beaker has a strip of a zinc metal. It acts as electrode and this zinc strip or you can say that the zinc electrode is dipped in one molar solution of zinc sulphate. This half cell is anode because it loses electron. It has a negative terminal. From the reaction you can see that zinc is losing electron and is changing into zinc ion. The half cell in which oxidation takes place is called a node and it has a negative potential with respect to the solution. Now you can see another beaker. It has a copper electrode, a strip of metal, copper metal which is acting as a copper electrode. It is dipped in one molar solution of copper sulphate. It is the other half cell. It is known as cathode and it is the positive terminal. Let's see the reaction which is going on the, in this half cell. Copper ions will gain two electrons and they will be reduced to copper. These two electrons which are gained by the copper will be lost by the zinc. The other half cell in which reduction takes place is called cathode and it has a positive potential with respect to the solution. Now you can see the two reactions. The one reaction is taking place at cathode and the other reaction is taking place at anode. Anode is our left hand side and cathode is on the right hand side. Just now I will explain you. From the picture you can see that the two beakers or the two half cells are kept aside. The one beaker is the zinc half cell and the other is the copper half cell. Can you predict that any reaction will take place between these two beakers? No, no reaction will take place between these two beakers because they are not connected. There is no way for the electrons to pass from the zinc half cell or the oxidation half cell to pass on to the copper half cell or you can say that the reduction half cell. We need to connect these two cells so that the two electrons which are lost by the zinc metal atom can pass to the copper ions so that they can gain those two electrons. So we need to connect them and we will connect them through an insulating wire. Unless or until they are connected, the reaction will not occur because there is no way for the electrons lost by the zinc to get over to the copper ions and reduce them to the copper metal. From the picture now you can see that the two electrodes are connected via insulating wire. In between, we can put an ammeter or an electrical bulb. The reading or the deflection in the ammeter or the glowing of the bulb will show that the energy which is produced during the chemical reaction is converting into electrical energy and that is the electrochemical cell. Now, the zinc will lose the two electrons and it will change into Zn2 plus ion and these two ions will move into the solution. And those two electrons via the wire will go to the copper half cell. There 
the copper ions Cu2 plus ions will accept or gain these two electrons and they will reduce to copper metal and these copper metal atoms will get deposited on the copper electrode. We can say that the electrons have a path to the copper, copper ion side. It would appear that the reaction can proceed and we can see that, that the bulb will glow. Now let me tell you and let me clear you that the passage of the electrons from the zinc side to the copper side will take place for just a moment and then the reaction will stop. Why this happens? Why the reaction stops? Why the glowing of the bulb stops? It is because of the reason that just after some time the zinc ions will deposit around the zinc electrode and the sulphate ions will deposit around the copper electrode. The working of the cell stops after some time. The reaction just takes place for a moment. Why this happens? Why cell stops working? Let me explain you. Actually what happens when the zinc loses electrons and dissolves as the zinc ions, slowly there is accumulation of these zinc ions or you can say that the positive charge accumulates around the zinc electrode. And in the other half cell, when the copper ions accept the electrons and deposit as the copper metal atom, there is accumulation of sulphate ions which have negative charge around the copper electrode. The accumulation of the positive charge around the zinc electrode and accumulation of negative charge around copper electrode stops the reaction. So if we want that our cell works continuously, we have to use something else. Let me tell you that what will happen if we connect the two solutions through an inverted U-tube that is known as salt bridge. Let's see, what if we had a tube filled with aqueous solution that connected the two redox reactions? In the picture, now you can see that there is an inverted U-tube. The one end of the U-tube is inserted or inverted in the zinc half cell and the other end is dipped in the copper half cell. This is a salt bridge. This tube contains an electrolyte and is called a salt bridge. The electrolyte which is filled in this U-tube is an inert electrolyte for example potassium chloride, potassium nitrate or ammonium nitrate. It is mixed in agar agar and it is in the form of a semi-solid paste to prevent intermixing. And this should be an inert electrolyte because it should not participate in the reaction. Now let me tell you how it works. As I have earlier told you, there is deposition of the positive ions around the zinc electrode. So the anions of the inert electrolyte will move towards the zinc half cell and neutralize the positive ions. And the cations will move to the copper half cell and neutralize the negative ions which are accumulated around the copper plate. In this way, it prevents the accumulation of the positive and the negative charges around the electrodes and helps in the continuous working of the cell. Now you can see from the figure that the direction of the electrons is from zinc to copper. And we already know that the direction of the flow of the current is opposite to the direction of the flow of electrons. So if electrons are moving from zinc to copper, the current will flow from copper to zinc. Just now I have explained you the working of an electrochemical cell which is also known as a galvanic or a voltaic cell. I have taken the example of a zinc and the copper couple. We can take other examples also 
and I have told you the utility of the salt bridge and the direction of the flow of the electrons and the direction of the flow of current. I hope you have understood all this.